If you want to continue to follow our adventure, click subscribe. So you don't miss anything, click the bell notification. Oh, last on the road, subscribers and followers. When you're way out here, far away from resources like water and gasoline, uh, you really have to learn how to conserve everything. And this is so much more extreme than your, your mother or father telling you, turn off the lights when you're done with them. Everything you do adds up real quick. And so I'm going to go through some of the things that we do to conserve the water and the electric and the gas for the generator. So, so we can stay out here as long as possible without having to run a town and spend all kinds of gas money in the truck. So, number one, when we take a shower, uh, a lot of people may have heard of this before. We take what's called a Navy shower. Now, a lot of people do this. This is nothing new. What you do is you wet down and then you lather up with soap and shampoos and everything that you use and then you rinse off. A lot of people take showers, but they just, you know, in their house, they let the water run. I did. And it's very nice. But here you, you shut it off. And this way, Carolyn and I can actually use, and we just did it today, less than five gallons of water. I think we're right at four gallons of water that we use between the two of us. So two gallons each. Dishes. We don't use a lot of dishes. As a matter of fact, we try to conserve the dishes that we use. If, uh, if we have a bowl of soup, for example, we won't use the bowl. We'll just eat right out of the pan. This way, we, we don't have to use so much water to wash the dishes. And then when we do have to do dishes, we don't have a dish pan. We take our pot that we just used to cook the soup in, and we put soap in it and put water in it, and then we use that as our dish pan. We wash all the other dishes off. And then we take a little uh, scooper and we scoop and rinse off our water very carefully so we won't waste a lot of it. Then we wash the pot and rinse it out with a full pot. All it with one pot full of water. Actually, it's probably about a half a pot full of water. Okay, when we go for walks, we fill up our water bottles that we've purchased at the store. And uh, all our water comes out of the Birkin into the gallon jugs. We store the gallon jugs in the truck out of the way. Well, when it's time to pour water into the bottle, you always spill some. You're, you're, it's inevitable. It might be a couple drops, but you spill some. And all those little drops add up real quick. So we always pour our water over the bucket of water. That way, if we spill any, it falls right back in the water. Now, granted, I'll have to refilter that water, but we didn't lose the water. That, that's critical. Laundry. There's a couple of th little tricks we do with laundry. Well, first thing we do is when we take a shower, we stand in this black tub. We take our clothes off. We put the clothes in the black tub that we're going to stand in and then we wash down so all that soapy water that has been on you goes down onto these clothes and now we have about four gallons of water to wash our clothes with then we have to use water usually we try to use rain water that way we're not using good spigot water if we have spigot water so we try to use rain water to rinse the, the clothes off now if there's a second load this is what where things get really cool we don't dump out the rinse water that we just rinsed the first load with we use that rinse water to wash the second load. This is a small little trick. When we make a pot of coffee, you drink a few cups, and at the bottom you might have, I don't know, a half a cup of, of uh, wa uh, uh, coffee left in the bottom of it that you probably forgot to drink, and it just sits there. Well, instead of dumping that out when we get ready to make the next pot, we actually use that. Now, that it's good coffee, good water. That way, that half a cup, we're not wasting that half a cup. So we fill the pot back up with water, and we make a new pot of coffee with that half a cup of already made coffee. If we're dumping that out every day, then we're wasting over a seven day period, seven cups of water. This is a significant savings. If you think about what seven cups will, will save you. I mean, that's drinking water. You could fill up your pot to make chicken noodle soup again. So that, that's a lot of water that we're conserving just by not dumping out that little bit of extra coffee at the bottom of the pot. So moving on to our electric consumption. Electric consumption is, is, is a big problem. It's not near as big as water, but it is the second biggest problem we have. Electric, uh, our refrigerator is the biggest consumer of electric we have. Depending on the temperature and what you have in the freezer, for example, if you uh, just fill the freezer up with meats, it runs about three hours straight trying to refreeze all that meat. That is a lot of electric to use up. And so your batteries are always being depleted and you're always having to charge them up. The other thing that consumes a lot of electric with the refrigerator is when it's warmer outside. The refrigerator does really good around 70 to 75 degrees, but when it gets over 75 to 80 degrees, it starts to kick on a lot more, runs a lot longer. So what I've done 
to try to reduce the amount of electricity it uses, and it really works well, is I've pulled the refrigerator out from the wall, and I blow a fan in, in behind it, and it keeps it cool when it's running, and it does shorten the amount of time that it runs in between cycles. Okay, here's a big one that I don't think a lot of people would consider. Now, here's the thing, if you spill half a cup of gasoline, that is a half hour runtime on the generator. It takes two hours to charge batteries. So if I waste an, uh, 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 an hour's worth of gasoline, I am re literally getting rid of half of my charge time on one uh, cycle of charge. Do not spill your gasoline when you're, when you're filling up your generator. Try to always just fill it just short of full. We're, we've never went over on gas. Our two cans of gas last us 14 days, which is plenty of gasoline. So we've never had an issue of having to go and get more gasoline. If we start spilling a lot of gas or we start going over more, say eight hours a day on the internet, then we're gonna be in real trouble. So we really gotta monitor it. So we don't wanna run the generator any more than six hours a day. We can't do it, otherwise we're running out of gas. Finally, the other thing that we, uh, we've identified as a huge problem is trash rotting food trash that is a big problem because uh, if you have rotting food even if you take it outside then the animals come around and and they tear up the trash and they scatter it all over the place that means we're gonna have to go to town and take trash all the time now a lot of people will say well, just burn that trash and i agree with that if you're in an area where you can have a campfire then burn the trash and then scoop that up and put it in a bag and then you can take it to town when you go to town and dump the trash but we're in an area that we can't burn. South Dakota doesn't allow burning in the Black Hills National Forest, so we can't burn. What does that mean for the, you know, the rotting food trash? Well, what we've done is as food is coming out of the freezer, you know, if we take out some chicken legs, well, then we still have the bones that we just ate from. We put those right back in the package that we used to package the chicken and put it right back in the freezer. So as the, the freezer becomes depleted, we're putting things back in the freezer. Now this, this isn't a big help, but it is a little bit of help because it also helps keep the freezer cool as the, as the meat items are coming out of the freezer. You have more open space that the freezer has to try to keep cool instead of the, the meat freezing. Well, now you have all that trash that is holding some of that cool air so it doesn't use quite as much electric trying to freeze nothing. So that is a double purpose there, freezing our trash and also helping reduce the runtime on the refrigerator. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe. Click like if you like the video. And happy travel.